Welcome to Tabletop Tactics. My name's Lawrence, and up until recently, I had never touched a 3D printer. I'm going to take you through my experience setting one up for the first time, covering all of the basics. So if you're interested in picking a printer up for yourselves, stay tuned as I include all the fails that went with it before finally showing you some epic results. Before we get into it, allow me to give a shout out to Elegoo who very kindly sent me this printer setup. Now full disclosure here, this isn't something that I requested at all. And up until Elegoo reached out to me, I had never even touched the printer, let alone knew anything about them from a technical standpoint. So when they asked me if I would be interested in making a review video for them, I thought, hey, this might be a great opportunity to try and learn how it all worked and take you guys through it from the perspective of a complete beginner. Now I warned Elegoo that I would only accept this on the basis of giving an honest review of my experience and other than providing the printer itself, they haven't paid us any money to make this video so rest assured you're getting my honest opinion here. With that out of the way, let's go over what Elegoo actually sent me. Here we have the Saturn III Ultra 12K resin printer with the Mercury wash and cure station, as well as some of their resin that they sent me in the red clay color. As this isn't a tutorial and more of an overview of my experience, I won't go into full detail as to how it all works, but I will cover the basic steps of the printing process so that you have a good understanding of how it works. Luckily, when I got to unboxing the printer and setting it up for the first time, I had my friend Josh drop by to help me. It's fair to say he's a bit of a printing expert and gave me a lot of crucial advice around the safety of the setup, such as working in a ventilated space, using gloves, and being mindful that isopropyl alcohol is very flammable. Luckily, we have an air extraction unit in our space, so that covered the ventilation, at least. Now, all of that can seem intimidating at first, but it's actually perfectly safe once you've got it set up nicely. The printer itself comes with all the necessary tools to print, including the preloaded slicing software on a USB stick. Whilst it largely comes pre-assembled, the hex key provided is used to screw the bolts that secure the build platform. There's also a scraper in there to help you remove your 3D prints from the platform once they're finished printing, as well as a plug-in purifier that helps with some of the fumes produced while printing resin. The slicing software that comes on the USB stick is called Chitubox and from my understanding is excellent. But I ended up installing the software that Josh was more familiar with called Lychee Slicer. I have to say, I found it pretty simple to use as it also comes with a video tutorial at launch and helps you identify your printer and print settings for the type of resin you're using. This actually proved really critical later on. Once you have your file in the software, you can then export it to the printer settings you've selected and it will slice it up into hundreds of layers before exporting it into a layered file that your printer can actually read. Now the printing process itself was something that I actually found really interesting. The panel screen down here flashes light at the resin in the shape of the layer that it's trying to expose from the design. This then hardens the resin on the build platform which sits down here inside this vat. Your print settings determine how long the light is flashed for and how quickly the build plate moves after exposure. It's effectively exposing a photograph of your miniature a layer at a time, printing the design upside down as it slowly lifts out of the vat with each layer until complete. Based on that, it's really important to give consideration to the size of your LCD screen and the build platform when buying a printer. The Saturn here has a whopping 10 inch build platform, which allows me to print miniatures approximately 10 inches in height, nine inches in width, and five inches in depth. This effectively means that I can print anything from a 32 millimeter wargaming scale that I would need. For reference, you could probably print something the size of a stomper in this thing. As most STL files would likely give you the ability to print the arms and head separately anyway. However, without a cure and wash station, 
I wouldn't say you're ready to start printing out of the box. As you will discover, all three must be used for a successful print process. So I would definitely recommend buying a wash and cure station with any printer you decide to purchase at the same time. Assuming your print has been successful, you then take the build platform off of the printer and place it into the wash station which is filled with isopropyl alcohol. Once you've washed the print and cleaned it up, you gently scrape the model off the platform, removing all the support struts, which by the way is actually a lot easier than it looks. A small pair of clippers helps a lot here, but you will often find that the model breaks away from the struts quite easily. You then place it in your curing station, which hardens the resin by exposing it to UV light. At that point, you can take the miniature out and it's ready for priming and painting. So once I had learned all these fundamentals, how did I actually get on with printing my first miniature? Honestly, not that well. <laughs> my biggest learning experience during this process was just how sensitive the print settings are depending on the type of resin you're using. Thinking back on it, it actually makes a lot of sense. As I've explained, the resin print is being exposed to light a bit like a photograph. If the resin color is darker, like my red clay resin I was sent, the exposure times on your print will need to be increased. As a result of this, the test rook chess piece that comes preloaded failed its print three times. All I was left to show for my efforts were three little resin coins that I had to very carefully peel away from the film on the bottom of my vat. That said, it was a fantastic learning experience and it forced me to fail upwards. Turns out the base settings of the printer just didn't work with the red clay resin. Now this is partly my fault as I should have checked their website for the resin settings from the get-go, but as I was a complete noob and Josh hadn't worked with this type of resin before either, we were both initially left scratching our heads. Neither of us, however, were willing to easily give up. So with Josh's help, we managed to find some community print settings from Lychee Slicer. That actually gave us the results we were after, the first of which was this incredible Space Marine bust. Josh had the STL for this already, so I can't direct you to where it's from. And of course, as it's GW's IP, I'm pretty sure this was a free fan-made project made for personal use only. That said, it is a great example of how clean a print you can get from something like the Saturn. The detail reproduction is just incredible, and this wasn't even printed at its highest resolution settings. Not a layer line in sight, and I didn't even have much of a support strut or flash cleanup. With this success, I then went onto the Elegoo website directly and downloaded their recommended settings list, and lo and behold, I found their recommendation for their red clay resin. Now, it may have been obvious to you guys that I should have done that to begin with, but honestly, when you are a complete beginner and you assume that the settings on the printer are already dialed in, it wasn't obvious to me. So I thought I would share that with you as a valuable learning experience. I then tested these settings on printing the characters for our Call of Cthulhu campaign over on demand. These successfully printed all together in only a couple of hours, and again, I was so impressed with the detail that could be reproduced on a resin printer. I then handed them over to Ed, who applied some paint to the miniatures and brought them to life. As you can see, the prints hold paint beautifully, and the only visual limit really seems to come from the STL files themselves. After all, nothing can fix a bad design. Since then, I've gone on to print various things, and I'm really excited about the potential of what I can do with a machine like this. My next project will be to try and print some Battlefield accessories for our gaming boards. This will also be a really good exercise in seeing the printer do some work on the larger pieces that were designed for FDM printers, which will also test out the automatic supports that Lychee Slicer offers in its software. If you're interested in following along with some of my future printing projects, be sure to follow myself or Tabletop Tactics on social media for updates. Maybe you've got some advice for beginners or myself you would like to share. If so, drop them in the comments below and we can continue the conversation there. For now, a massive thank you to Elegoo for sending me this printer bundle. I do highly recommend it and I think the quality of the prints I've produced really do speak for themselves. So if you're interested in picking this unit up, you can find it in the links in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. I've been Lawrence. This has been Tabletop Tactics and I'll see you in the next video.